Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is um, a, a neat opportunity for me to uh, interview one of our current student athletes. With me today is uh, Elena Fragameni. She is a senior at Mount Holyoke College. Um, she's gearing up for her uh, Caesar, a senior spring semester on the team. Um, but uh, really notably, and congratulations to Elena, she was just awarded the Rhodes Scholarship to study for uh, at least two years at Oxford University. It's a really prestigious award. We'll talk a little bit more about it, but wanted to bring her on and talk about her squash experiences and the Rhodes Scholarship and her time at Mount Holyoke. So Elena, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much. It's so nice to speak with you and nice to, nice to be doing something for CSA this morning. Yeah. I really appreciate you joining me. So um, let's start with um, let's start with your squash background a little bit, just to you know tell well tell us a little about about yourself, uh, how you landed at, at Mount Holyoke, and and your career building up so far. Yeah, so um, I was born and raised in the Pioneer Valley in Western Massachusetts. Um, lived for my whole life in Northampton, Massachusetts, which is home to kind of five colleges, um, including Mount Holyoke. Um, I went to Northampton High School, really just stayed in the valley, um, but I had never heard of squash until my senior year of high school at Northampton High um, when I became close with who is now my best friend, um, who um, played squash, knew squash, um, he's from South Korea. Um, and so I uh, kind of was like, oh, this sounds fun, let's try it. We needed something to do hanging out. Um, and so we would go um, and play squash on Friday afternoons, on the weekends, get a bunch of friends together, roped our friends into doing it. Um, his sister went to Smith College, which is right next to Northampton High. So we would kind of sneak into the courts on the weekends and on Fridays and bring a speaker, blast some music, um, have some fun. And so I really learned everything from him. So full credit to him and that group of friends. Um, and then when I was applying to colleges, I I really was at that point, like not good enough to be thinking about playing squash more than recreationally. But I knew that I wanted a college that had squash courts. I was like, I love this. It's so fulfilling throughout my whole college application process, which was really stressful, going to those courts on the weekends and hitting with my friends was the best stress relief in the world. Um, and I knew that I needed that. Um, and so every college tour I went on, I would ask if they had a squash team, if they had squash courts, and I would go look at the squash courts. Um, and when I toured Mount Holyoke, I really loved it, but I looked at the squash courts. And if you've ever been to Mount Holyoke, they're they're beautiful. They open, they're, they're indoors, but they open onto the track. So you're in this huge, beautiful open space. Um, and it just felt right. And I liked Mount Holyoke. I got in, I went back to the squash courts on my accepted students day and looked at them um, and just kind of knew that maybe it was the place for me. Um, and so went to Mount Holyoke. The squash story is a long one. It's no, very... it's, I gotta say, I, I don't want to interrupt you because it's, I think it's really cool. You know, I um, just personally, I came to the game pretty late too. You know, I was yeah. kind of a tennis player growing up and uh, picked it up when I was in school. And I think, you know, so often we hear about um, players who've been playing for a long time and have gone through the junior circuit. But, um, you know, at CSA, we, we're made up of so many different players with different backgrounds. And it's great to hear, you know, I think I said to you earlier, if we had more people, you know, getting interested in the game and, and choosing to sneak into courts on Friday weekends, um, I, you know, I think, I think the level would be, the level of play in the United States would, would just continue to go up. So I'm, I love that story. I encourage yeah. anyone out there listening, you know, sneak onto those courts, get after, follow Elena's lead. No, definitely sneak into the courts. It was a blast. And I mean, I, I do tell my coach now our play was a little dangerous because I had no idea what I was sure. doing. So, so maybe I would advise, like, look at CSA rules. And <laughs> play. Um, there were a lot of bruises from squash balls early on in my career. Uh -huh. um, but I, when I went to Mount Holyoke, I, Mount Holyoke has a PE requirement, which is okay. rare for colleges. Um, but I knew I wanted to play squash, so I did squash as my PE. Um, met coach Erin Robson. She is amazing and started playing recreationally we started on like thursday afternoons um students who just liked the game would get together and play um and then my squash skills got better stopped hitting people with balls nice. <laughs> stopped hitting myself with my racket nice. um, and eventually got to got to join the team 
Yeah. And uh, I got to say, uh, Coach Robson is is a big fan of yours as well. You know, she talks about the, the energy and commitment that you bring and the, that you show to the team and, and what an impact you have um, with your enthusiasm and, and commitment to showing up. And uh, I know you've been battling some injuries, but you're looking to get on court this spring. Yeah, it's it's comical. I have to say, I as soon as I could join the team, I got injured. So I haven't actually played a CSA match ever. Um, but I love watching my teammates. I've gotten to really learn refereeing and marking and getting all those kind of skills. Um, and just being part of the team this year has been um, the most amazing experience, stress relief, community, um, getting to really have an interesting outlet besides my studies, which I think has really helped me as a whole. Awesome. Awesome. So let's, since you brought it up, let's talk about your studies. Yeah. Um, I believe you're a French and poli sci double major. Is that right? Yeah, I do French and politics, and then I also do um, a minor in journalism, public discourse media. Why, so why, uh, how have you gotten into to those topics in particular? Yeah, so politics is something that I really felt passionate about um, since I was young, um, really seeing the kind of impact that public policy could have on my own family, on my own community. Um, so I entered into college knowing that I wanted to study politics. And French was really something that I thought could be a tool to that. Um, I'm interested in international relations. I wanted to learn a language that I felt like could help me in international institutions. Um, kind of naturally developed a major from there. And then journalism for me, again, has been that kind of tool to connect people to governments, um, to facilitate change through journalism. Um, so I think of French and journalism kind of as these supplements to my interest in international relations and politics. Very cool. Uh, well, that's that's fascinating. Sounds like a lot of work, too. Um, <laughs> so so kudos for for taking care of the business there. Um, mm. So let's let's talk a little bit about the, the Rhodes Scholarship process. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I read you were you're one of 32 uh, people who've been awarded a scholarship out of over 2,300 applicants. Um, so that's incredibly impressive. You're one of uh, one of 22 women of uh, who are awarded um, a scholarship. It's the highest number that they've ever had, and first uh, first Mount Holyoke woman to uh, to get in over 25 years. Uh, so really uh, impressive stuff there. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about how you heard about it and what the process was like? Yeah, um, I really did not, you know, even about a year ago, I did not really know much about the roads at all. I did not really see graduate school as part of my story. Um, I just didn't think it would be financially possible. I didn't think it was something that I could do or, or was reasonable for me. Um, but I started thinking um, kind of in the pandemic about maybe graduate school could be possible for me. Maybe this is perhaps the way to go rather than immediately applying to jobs. And why don't I just try? That's kind of my motto. I'm like, why don't I just throw my hat into the ring? Um, so I met with the Mount Holyoke College Fellowships Office. And I will say every college pretty much has a fellowships office. So anybody find your fellowships office at your college um, and started asking, like, what would it look like to apply to something like this? Um, and so really worked over the summer, this past summer, writing essays, um, finding recommenders, thinking about what it would look like to apply, and submitted my application this fall. Um, and went through an interview process in November, um, and thankfully, amazingly, was selected. And I'll be heading to Oxford for two years to study global governance and diplomacy, um, as well as public policy, is the plan. Okay. Yeah. Can you, do you know much about how it works? Like once you get there, are you, you know, I know Oxford has different colleges and, you know, kind of get a rant, have, but how does, how do you expect it to play out once you get there? Yeah. So I'll arrive in October, 2022. Okay. Um, and basically what I, from what I understand, it's a, it's a new system to me. I'm still learning, but you live, you pick a college. So you apply to your degree, but also you get selected into a college and your college is basically where you live and eat and study. It has a library. Some of the colleges have squash courts in their dorms. Which right, is so we're going to prioritize those. I, so. I have a list and everything was like, okay, doesn't have squash courts. Yeah. Um, and so I'm exclusively applying to ones that have squash courts. Very nice. Um, and so I'll live there and then I'll do a one year master's and then a second one year, ideally. Very nice. Uh, so will you get two master's or just, uh, oh, wow, masters. very cool. It's a really amazing program. That's phenomenal. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 
I, I've known I've known about it for a long time, but was was looking into it. You know, it's one of the pre most prestigious academic awards coming, you know, for for graduate students coming out of undergrad. So, uh, just an amazing uh, experience for you. Uh, very happy for you that you're able to take advantage of that. Can you talk a little bit about the interview process? I know there was one one thing that stood out, but I'm curious how you know once you once you were invited for interviews, how that played out. Yeah, so the interview process, it's a two day process um, and it was conducted virtually this year, although typically pre pandemic, it was in person um, and it includes a social hour where you get to meet the committee, talk to the other candidates. Um, it includes an individual interview and then potentially second interviews, although those aren't always called um, and then the announcement of the award on the second day. Um, and it, the process was really funny because that that weekend that I was doing it, we had um, two matches. So there, our team had a match on the Saturday and on the Sunday. And my interview process was the Friday and the Saturday. Uh -huh. So I was doing all this and in between going to practice, cheering on my team, doing social media for the team, going into the matches, which I swear completely helped calm my nerves. The, sure. The morning before the announcement, I was watching um, our match. And so it, it was just amazing to have the support of the team and be around them throughout that whole process. Um, our team does something called Secret Sister, where the day before a match, somebody like gives a little gift, like a little snack or some Gatorade or something and a note. And it's anonymous. And one of my teammates, typically the notes are about, you know, go like fighting, go good job on your match. And my teammate wrote me this whole note about good luck on the interview. And just having my team be so supportive throughout that whole weekend was an absolute blessing. And so I really think that squash players have a have an advantage in the process of having their teams. Um, but also something that struck me was during all parts of my interview, the committee was really interested in my squash experience. They really wanted to hear about um, the community that I'm part of. They wanted to hear about the team. They wanted to hear about how the match was going that day. Um, and they were really, really excited. Sounds like they they took a lot of time to get to know you and and uh, your affiliations on campus. Uh, yeah. that's that's awesome. Well, it's great. I mean, it's great to hear that squash <laughs> played a nice, a prominent role in more in more ways than one with the interview. It's it's uh, you know we we feel you know coming from from the governing body and and I know you know my friends at US Squash feel the same way. That community is such a, a huge aspect of playing squash. Um, you know, team squash at the college level is is kind of a unique aspect of that 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 we really value and and kind of hang our hat on, and it's it's just it's really heartwarming that that you feel so strongly about that and, no, uh, and I, the impact that has had. I do, and I truly, I've in certain moments I've tried to think about like what is it about squash that I think has touched me so much, and I and one little piece that I think about is literally just the construction of the court for me, like. I, I, there's nothing else where you can open a door, enter with someone, a friend, a competitor, someone you care about, a teammate, close that door. And, and squash doors always have that very like sound when you close them, it's normally like a big slam, right? right? But then you're in that court and it's just you on that court with a friend, um, getting to experience something that's separate from the rest of your life. But for me, gave me those skills of um, you know, we work with someone on our team about anxiety management and deep breathing and being focused on just the ball and all of those skills. I did the deep breathing that our team does before my Rhodes interview. Uh -huh. And it was just this total, for me, this full circle of something that I fell in love with my senior year of high school with my best friends to something that is helping me move towards my future. Wow. Oh, what a what an incredible story arc. Uh, I love that. And uh, I'm, I'm so glad that that your experience is is as good as it is, and you're gaining those those skills that are going to help in life. I mean, we um, I've I've felt that way, and and I know others do too. But to hear to hear it continue, you know, these first first person anecdotes are are so meaningful. So that's that's mm -hmm. great. Where do you see you know post uh, post your two years in England? Where you know what are your goals? Where do you see yourself going from there? Yeah, I hope to work in international relations. Um, this past summer, I interned for the U.S. State Department, um, which I really, really enjoyed. So I'm hoping to perhaps um, think about working with the State Department again or perhaps in some other international institutions. I really do love institutional work, like working within governing bodies. Uh -huh. um, so I'm hoping to do some of that work in the future. But I'm also open to where, where Oxford takes me. Um, yeah. I'm excited to meet professors and students who um, are doing some amazing things and, and hope that that helps shape my path, too. 
Uh, I think I think that's a great attitude. You know, you're you're still very young and have a lot a long future ahead of you. Obviously, a bright future, and you're going to have a lot of contacts coming out of that uh, that experience at Oxford. So uh, phenomenal, um, definitely best of luck. And and of course, and I know you won't based on your uh, your attitude towards it. Don't forget about you know us little guys here. Oh, I will <laughs> uh, in the college squash world. Um, you know, you're always welcome. Welcome back. I mean, you're not gone yet, so we're looking forward. To, we're looking forward to seeing you on court next semester, um, and at the championships and whatnot. But down the road, um, you know, this your story is is inspirational. It's it's heartwarming. It's really just a really cool cool thing. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to to have this chat with you today uh, to hear all about it because uh, mm -hmm. I've I've heard only great things. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Elena, congratulations again on your scholarship. Congrats on your your last year at Mount Holyoke. I hope I hope fingers crossed it goes uh, as smoothly and as uninterrupted yes. as possible. And injury free. I keep telling myself squash is going to be a lifelong thing for me. I know it is. I will keep sneaking into courts, although I hope more are open and we can build a ton and keep them open to everyone so more high school kids can hang out with their friends there on weekends and that would that's that's i, I think that's a message we might have to hire you as our that's messaging personal mission. that's my personal mission with as i open your squash perfect course. well this is on video now so uh we're gonna hold you to that down the road when when you come come back stateside so uh thanks so much for your time today elena it's great to meet you i hope to see you in person on court later this year and congratulations again really excited thank you so much thank you